who's the black private dick that's a sex machine to all the chips? Shaft! You're damn right. Functioning as an expression of black empowerment, but also condemned by some civil rights groups as perpetuating black stereotypes, the genre of black exploitation emerged in the 1960s and 70s, featuring heroic black characters and predominantly black casts. Such casting choices were novel or even edgy back then, but even now, film analysts are observing how the majority of black actors still have narrow opportunities in Hollywood, and After Earth, a film with two black actors as its main characters, was still an improbable production. Even Django Unchained, a modern black exploitation movie with a black protagonist, love interest, and secondary antagonist, still had a white main character, Dr. King Schultz, alongside Django. Black exploitation films were initially made for black audiences, thus recognizing a different demographic than that of white male, which Hollywood still primarily caters to, but many black exploitation films found wider popularity. A couple of years ago, my friend Victor reviewed the much better than it sounds Blackula and its terrible spin-off Blackenstein, but Sweet Sweet Jack's badass song and Shaft, and most recently Django Unchained, are undoubtedly the most celebrated entries in the black exploitation genre. Richard Roundtree stars as John Shaft, a private detective working in Harlem, New York. When he is threatened with a manslaughter charge after throwing an assailant out the window, Shaft is enlisted by both the police and the mob to find information for them. It turns out that the Mafia has kidnapped the mob boss's daughter, and Shaft is enlisted to rescue her before an ostensible race war breaks out. Shaft is a cool movie, there's no better way of putting it. The soundtrack by the late Isaac Chef Hayes, who became the first African American to win a non-acting Oscar for the theme song, is very groovy and fun to listen to, and Roundtree has a magnetic presence as Shaft, playing a smooth, bold, and clever man with an aura of self-assured swagger and plenty of witty lines. As Stephen J. Schneider, editor of 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, pointed out, Shaft is one of the first strong black protagonists in cinema, as he makes his own rules, listens to no one, gives the orders instead of taking them, and is not the least bit afraid of making jokes at the expense of white authority figures. Going back to the possible consequences of black exploitation, positive stereotypes, such as Africans are good at sport, Asians are good at math, Italians are great cooks, and all French are sexual liberated, can still be detrimental, as they create the assumption that all members of a race, culture, or group are a certain way. As a suave lady killer, Shaft is an idealized depiction of a black hero, but most heroes of any kind are idealized, made to be cool or exceptional in some way, in lighter films like this. The other characters don't strike me as stereotypical. Most of the black characters are involved in crime to some extent, but then so are the majority of the white characters. And this affiliation is to be expected in a crime drama. Shaft and his uneasy ally, black nationalist Ben Buford, Christopher St. John, also allude to their involvement in the Black Power movement, of which groups like the Black Panther Party were some of the more extreme and militant forms it took. This background explains Ben's distrust of white people. Conversely, Shaft has a taunting yet respectful dynamic with his white cop friend, Lieutenant Androsi, Charles Kiofi, and the doctor who treats him and the lady who he shags are both white. The film overall is very critical of racism toward either side. The only wildly unrealistic character is the gay bartender, and while he is played somewhat for laughs, he isn't degraded any further and made to seem stupid or bad. As a non-American white person, I might not be in the best position to say this, but given the historical context of this film, I don't think that the characterization in Shaft is overly stereotypical or harmful to the image of black people. Quite the contrary, the main characters, including Shaft himself, are interesting and layered, and develop as the film progresses. Ben initially resents Shaft, but relaxes as they help and lean on each other, and mob boss Bumpy, Moses Gunn, comes across as a father who sincerely wants his daughter back, but is also a very crafty manipulator, drawing Shaft along the path set for him. There are some highly suspenseful sequences of Shaft evading and striking back against his enemies, and the meticulously coordinated rescue operation is very thrilling. I just wish the plot and pacing were better. Shaft is rather slow and boring in parts, and the sex scenes are unnecessary, though the one-night stand does set up a recurring joke. 
As for the plot, it seems to lack impetus or personal urgency for Shaft by the second act. In the beginning, Shaft is attacked by a couple of gangsters in his office and throws one out the window. He lies to Androsi and claims that his friend just slipped and fell out of the window, but he still faces a manslaughter charge. Androsi offers Shaft a way out of this charge through gathering information about the conflicts between the mob and the mafia in New York. This means that absolving Shaft is the leverage that the police have over him. But in the second act, Androsi gives Shaft very specific information about a recent murder and kidnapping between the mob and mafia, meaning that they know most of the who, what, when, where and why that Shaft was supposed to get for them. As such, they no longer have much leverage over Shaft, but since Shaft doesn't tell the police the missing detail of Bumpy's daughter having been kidnapped by the mafia, Shaft, by inaction, is making it so that the police still have leverage over him. That conflict is secondary to the main one of Shaft rescuing Bumpy's daughter, and that point I made does become moot when Shaft is well and truly wanted for questioning, but it's a major element of the setup that doesn't make much sense, and remains a persistent niggling flaw as you watch. Shaft is a moderately fun movie with a funky soundtrack, a cool protagonist, and a thoroughly exciting finale, and these properties are mostly enough to overcome the plot and pacing problems. Shaft earns three and a half stars out of five. Thanks for watching. Cheers.